dangers will be incredibly unpredictable. Throw everything we can at these things and get people the hell out of that city. They're gearing up for World War III. Oh my god! Kong is calling for help. That's a call for war. Where's he going? Godzilla won't come down here unless Kong brings him. but it should hold. It's good. It looks good, Trapper. Damn good. He's either gonna love it or he's gonna rip it off with his teeth. find this place. He must have sensed you. Mm. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. There's more Godzilla and Kong trailer footage that they just released, so we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of clips, too, especially from a couple key points in the movie. So if you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for everything. And later this week when the movie actually comes out, I'll do my full breakdown, any kind of post credit scenes they might release. I have not seen the movie, so I don't know if there's going to be post credit scene. There haven't been post credit scenes in previous movies, so I'm not expecting there to be one. Usually if they're teasing whatever's happening in the next movie, they do it before the actual credits. Like there's some sort of end credits tag before the actual end credits. But I think part of the idea is they intend to continue making movies in the monster verse, whatever kind of movies, until the heat death of the universe. Like until these movies stop making money and they make gangbusters money so far. So for all of you who are hoping for Godzilla Final Wars inside the monster verse, like Godzilla Endgame with like every crazy titan ever, it sounds like they'll eventually get there at some point, but I don't know if that means they're going to continue doing team-up movies after this or if they'll split off into their own movies like the next movie will be just a Godzilla movie and just a Kong movie. But just starting at the beginning of the brand new footage, they start with a new clip of them going to the Hollow Earth. Every time they go to the Hollow Earth, it seems like they're modeling it after that scene in 2001 Space Odyssey when they're traveling through dimensions. That's almost the way they've been treating the Hollow Earth inside the MonsterVerse. It's kind of like an alternate dimension, but I don't think it's literally meant to be an alternate dimension. 
The director also clarified that all life on Earth is meant to have originated inside the hollow Earth. It's just that some of it stayed inside the hollow Earth. And I think part of the idea is that all the radiation that's given off inside the hollow Earth is what mutated all the Titans. Like Shimo is supposed to be one of the original Titans, if not the original Titan. Time is supposed to move much more slowly inside the Hollow Earth. So that would explain how Shimo could still be alive in present day, even though all the Titans in the Hollow Earth seem like they're from ancient races. They cut a couple different scenes together. Then Godzilla swimming, kind of swimming, through this gravity-less area inside the Hollow Earth, making it seem like he's underwater. Everybody I've seen is just calling this pink version of Godzilla, Godzilla Evolved, but I don't know what they're going to call it in the context of the movie. Every time there's a new movie, Godzilla gets a new upgrade that's color-coded slightly differently. Whatever powers he gets in the next movie, we'll see what color he winds up turning. When the person is saying changes will be incredibly unpredictable, obviously they're using it in the context of Kong getting his beast gauntlet, Godzilla getting his upgrade, but she could be talking about literally any plot point during the movie. It could also be just about Scar King trying to take over the surface world with Shimo's help and the other Titans. There's a ton more of that fight in Rio de Janeiro, RIP Rio de Janeiro. There's a couple different scenes they cut together here too, like they have a scene of Scar King using his whip weapon with that energy at the end. The energy the tip is giving off could have something to do with the way he's controlling Shimo. A lot of people wondering if the skeleton that he's using for his whip there in that energy at the tip comes from one of Shimo's other relatives. I don't know if that's the case. The energy coming off the end could just be part of a normal weapon, but when Kong is getting blasted by the cold energy, I think that's actually coming from Shimo's breath weapon. It seems like Shimo freezes most of the Bay Area here. There are a couple new scenes of Godzilla fighting Shimo also at that Rio de Janeiro fight. We get a bunch better looks of her in the broad light of day. I do believe that she is a female Titan and way, way bigger than Godzilla. Bunch of big chonky Titans. There's a lot more scenes of Godzilla from a fight scene with a bunch of air fighters earlier in the movie when he has the blue energy rippling around him. This could be a flashback. It could be happening much earlier in the movie just to explain what Godzilla is doing when the events of the movie pick up. There's a bunch more scenes of him fighting the spider titan Scylla. Not totally clear why they're fighting because at the end of King of the Monsters where we saw Scylla for the first time, he became King of the Monsters again. So Godzilla told all the other titans to chill. The only way I see them explaining this is if Scar King is controlling Scylla somehow. Like maybe it was down in the hollow earth at the end of King of the Monsters. So when Godzilla roared and told all the other titans to go back to sleep, Scylla was not around. Notice he also doesn't have his pink upgrade when he's fighting Scylla. It does seem like there's a lot going on with Godzilla before they actually team up at the end of the film to fight Scar King and Shimo. Couple more scenes of them playing tennis with Scar King again. This actually looks like a scene of Kong trying to double punch Shimo or Scar King and Shimo using a tail attack to basically bat him away. Doing the same thing to him that Godzilla just did to Scar King. Like they're all playing tennis with each other using the different tail weapons. Then we get a much longer scene of Jin asking Kong to get Godzilla's help to come down to the Hollow Earth to deal with Scar King and Shimo. Notice he's already got his beast gauntlet here. Then they kind of jump through a bunch of different scenes. Like they kind of fast forward a little bit through some of these later scenes. He jumps through another portal and comes out topside in Egypt around the pyramids where it seems like Godzilla, like it's not really clear exactly what's going on with Godzilla when he shows up, but Godzilla is inside the city, notices him and treats it like an act of war coming to fight him. I think this is meant to be the first time that they've actually seen each other, like been close in person since the events of Godzilla vs. Kong, and that's why they're so aggro. But I love the way that Kong is trying to communicate with Godzilla, especially without words. Like he's trying to convey this entire story to him and show him that they need to go back down to the Hollow Earth, but Godzilla is not listening to anything. Warner Brothers has been releasing a couple funny promos of people trying to interview Godzilla and Kong as if they were actual people talking about the movie itself. Technically, they don't have any real way of communicating other than sign language. Like, I think that's the way that they actually communicate. They've been trying to use some real world logic. Like, Godzilla is meant to be very intelligent, but Godzilla's fingers can't actually make signs. Like, they're not dexterous enough to do sign language. So I think that's why most of the actual communication between Godzilla and Kong, or even Godzilla and the other Titans, is mostly meant to be body language. You can let me know if you think that Godzilla has an actual language that he would speak with the rest of his kind. Like, his kind would have their own way of communicating, too. Like, I don't think they're telepathic or anything like that. Then we get a new scene of Kong getting his Beast Gauntlet upgrade. Notice the electrical charge that it gives off when he pounds the ground. I think that's meant to be a reference to his lightning powers from the original Godzilla vs. Kong movie. You can actually see energy rippling all over the gauntlet during their big final fight in Rio de Janeiro, too. 
There's another clip of Suko bringing Kong back to their little hideout there in the Hollow Earth after Kong loses his fight to Shimo in Scar King the first time. Notice he doesn't have his axe with him and he passes out from the beatdown. When he says he lost home, he's meaning he lost the fight to them and wasn't able to save his race of apes in their ancestral home that has now been lost to the Scar King. It kind of makes it sound like once he defeats Scar King, that's where he's going to live again with his people as King Kong, like Kong will become King Kong during the movie. Sort of the same way that Godzilla became King of Monsters during the King of Monsters movie. They've kind of been implying this through all the different trailers and clips too, like Kong will rule the Hollow Earth and Godzilla will continue to rule the Surface World Titans. Then we get a funny clip of Kong meeting Suko for the first time and them just playing it for a joke, like is that a mini Kong making all the Son of Kong references, even though he isn't literally Kong's son. The way they've been using Suko in all the new promos is sort of like Grogu on the Mandalorian, like a little mini Yoda running around, little mini Kong running around. I know a lot of people are like, does this mean they're going to do Godzuki at some point in the movies? I don't think so, but it is possible because I do think they're going to let Shimo live at the end of the movie. And if Shimo is a female, that means that potentially she could give birth to an offspring or she might already have one. And maybe that has something to do with the way the Scar King is controlling her. There's a lot of theories about that. Like if she's so powerful, then how is Scar King able to control her? Post all your predictions and your theories in the comments below. And if there's any footage or any Easter eggs or references that you spotted that I didn't talk about in the video, just write it below in the comments. My full breakdown Easter eggs post credit scene video, if there is a post credit scene, will post later this week after the movie actually comes out in theaters. So be sure to go see it as soon as possible. It looks like it's going to be crazy. A couple other real big things happening this week too. We have X-Men 97 episode 3. That video will be up as soon as they release it and Invincible season 2 episode 7. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that stuff. Click here for all my other Godzilla and Kong trailer videos and click here to learn about Henry Cavill in Deadpool and Wolverine. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.